I'm just wondering, um, how do you create such exotic and beautiful names, for example, Cersei or Daenerys? I just, it intrigues me to know how you create these names. Um, names, are, names are hard. Uh, I, there's, there's no easy answer to that. Uh, I have a, a library and have for, for years of uh, what to name your baby books. <laughs> Even though I've never uh, had a baby. And now uh, all your names are in them. <laughs> and I'm always, you know, picking up new what to name your baby books and, you know, what to name your baby books in other countries and all that, and you find cool, cool sounding names. I do know what, what's been useless to me is, you know, I, I thought it would be a cool tool at first, but it's the online fantasy name generator thing. <laughs> <laughs> And I've tried those a few times. We'll generate, just, just hit this button, we'll generate 50 fantasy names, and they all turn out to be Grisnockle. But uh, <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'll use Grisnockle sometimes. It's, uh, you know, for the right character, any name would do. But a lot of fantasy names are too much to me. They're, they're, they're too difficult to pronounce. Um, I wanted the flavor of medieval England. So that was my goal. So I, I took some actual medieval names, some actual names that we still use today, like Robert. Um, and in some cases, I tweaked them a little. Like I made, I made Edward into Eddard. Uh, if you actually look at the medieval history, um, people didn't know how to spell their own names. There, there were a million variants. There are like six known Shakespeare signatures and, and no two of them are spelled the same. So uh, there was a lot of variants that we've, we've lost over the years, so some of that could be used. Um, I also wanted to use names. I have a, a backstory, of course. I have successive waves of people coming to Westeros, and each group has their own types of names. So a certain type of name, a very simple descriptive name, like uh, Stark or Hart or etc., denotes first men heritage, because uh, theirs were what we would think of as simple English words, you know, stout, strong, uh, etc. cetera. Um, then I wanted the, the Andal names to be slightly more elaborate than that. And of course, the Targaryen, the Valerian names, I wanted a sense of exot exoticism about that, so they have a lot of Ys and a lot of the AE constructions and uh, so forth. And I also broke naming violations. <laughs> conventional, conventional wisdom is uh, when you're a writer, they'll tell you as a young writer coming out, never, never give two characters in a story a name beginning with the same letter because the, the readers will get confused. As simple as you are. And <laughs> no. I knew right at the beginning that I was going to have more than 26 characters, so <laughs> I, was, I was in trouble there. I was going to have to violate that one right, right at the beginning. But then I also studied, again, history. And uh, yeah, you know, English history is like all Henrys and Edwards. <laughs> Occasionally a Richard sneaks in, but it's mostly, yeah, here's some more Henrys, here's another Edward, here you go, you know. You can actually make a study of all of English history, and it's, it's whenever it is like a, a Prince of Wales who has an odd name like Arthur or Eustace, you know they're not going to make it. You know? <laughs> Something always happens to the guys named Eustace before they can, uh, they can climb the throne. We're never going to see King Eustace, I guarantee you that. Um, so, so I said, well, if English history can be all Henrys and Edwards, I can make mine all Aegons and uh, Daenerys's and... Uh, you know, for the Starks, Brandon, and all that. But ultimately, it comes down to uh, what sounds right. What sounds right. Uh, and sometimes I really wrestle with that uh, because I can't find the right name for a character. And until I find the right name, it's like I don't know who he is and I can't proceed on it. <laughs>